Hi, I'd like to do a little example of Xcode, and I'm using Xcode 6.4. And the example I'd like to do is to talk about the, uh, the navigation controller and how to use the navigation controller in segways along with storyboard. And uh, so I'm going to start here with uh, a new project. So I'll click, you know, create new project. And the project type will be an iOS project um, single view application. And let's call it uh, navigation example. And I'll save it to this folder here. Okay, so now I've got my project saved. We'll have to spend a minute or two um, setting up this project so it has all the features that we need. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, import some images. And I, I want to create um, some pages that I can navigate between. And so I'll just put a picture on each page so we can see that we're you know, going to a different page rather than just having a blank screen. So I'll just grab these four images out of this folder here and drag them into my project. And um, you know, it gives me this option, do you want to copy those files if needed? I'm going to make sure that's checked and say, yeah, let's copy those. Okay, so now they're copied in here. Okay, so uh, so now I'm going to go to the um, storyboard, and I'll click on main storyboard, and you can see this is the one default view controller that we get. And so this is one view in our project. So the first thing I'd like to do is resize this. So I'm going to use the, I mean, really this can be any size depending on the device, but just for saving some space here, while I make the video, I'm going to set the size to the 3.5 inch iPhone. So that's like the original iPhone or the iPhone 4. Um, and there's my view. So I want to make a couple of these views, um, and they'll all be just like this first one. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is use the image view right here. So I'll scroll down to the object library, and I'll find image view. And I'll drag it into the window here, and... I'll drag it until it fits itself, you know, to fill the screen there, okay? You can make it any size, really, okay? And then maybe I'll set a background image here. So I'll go to Image, and I'll choose one of my images that I imported. So there's the image there. And I want this image, you know, if the screen changes size, um, I want the image to kind of fill the entire space. So what I'm going to choose is on the mode up here, I'll choose aspect fill. So aspect means the image doesn't get sized disproportionately and, you know, it doesn't get scaled differently on the height, height and width. And fill means it always fills the entire area. Okay? So next, let's set up some constraints. Okay? So I've got my, my image view selected and I want it to fill the screen. So I'll click on the little box here, the second option at the bottom. And I'll check the four sides here. So this is saying that I want the, um, the edges to go right up to the edge of the screen. This says negative 16 here because there's actually a margin. And so I have the constraint to margin. So it's actually measuring from the margin, which comes in 16. If you want to turn that off, you can do that, right? So now it's 0, 0, 0. So we know that it should be 0 you know, units from each edge, right? So we'll click Add Four Constraints, and there we go. All right, so let's set up another view. We'll do this one the same way. So at the top here, I'll grab a view controller object, drag it into the view, choose the size here to iPhone 3.5, and then we'll grab another image view. So we're just going to repeat all the steps that we did in the last one, right? So I'll grab an image view here and place it in the view controller. And I'll set the image here to my second image. And we'll make it aspect fill. And then now let's set some constraints. So with the image view selected, I'll click the little button down here, the second one. And we'll set the constraints to 0, 0, and 0. OK, so now we've got two view controllers. We'll add another one later. OK. So, uh, so how do I get from one view to the next view? Okay, 
So, uh, you know, we could use a button, right? There's a couple ways to do this. You could swipe. Um, for right now, I'm going to use the button, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the button here. I'll find the button in the object library again and drag it and drop it into the view here. And maybe I'll, I'll type next in there. And then I'll make the button like a little bit bigger like this. Maybe I'll make it, I don't know, 70 by 40 or something or just about that, right? And then just so we can see it, I'll set the background color to white. And then maybe I'll click on the color and make it partially transparent here, right? So what I did is I selected the button and then I found the option at the bottom here of the button properties, right? So I'm on the property inspector there. And then I set the background color for the button, right? And if you click on this, you'll get the color picker and you can set the color options. Or if you click on this side, you can choose one of the default colors. Okay, so let me fit this into the lower corner, right? And what I'd like to do is I'd like to set some constraints on this button. So I always want it to be this distance from the lower right corner. So what I'll do is I'll click on the second button here, the pin button. And then I'll set the, the edges here to 0 and 20. Okay? And uh, you can turn off the margin if you want or leave it on. It doesn't matter, right? But we'll, we just want these two right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the width and height. So usually you need four constraints to set the position of something on the screen. So in this case, I'm setting the X and Y coordinates based on the left and bottom edges. And then I also need to tell the computer the size of this element. So I'm giving it a width and a height, okay? And that's enough for the computer to, to figure out where to place this. So I'll click uh, Add Four Constraints. And we can tell this is working well because all the constraints have turned blue. Okay, if they were orange, there would be a problem. Okay, or something that you needed to take care of. Let's add a button to this new view here. So I'll drag another button out here. I'll type in previous. And uh, I'll change the size here a little bit. And then fit it into the corner. <coughs> and then maybe we'll set the background. So again, I'm on the properties here, the, the middle little arrow thing and then I'll scroll to the bottom background and maybe we'll set the background color to white and then I'll make this a little bit transparent and so there's my next button and my previous button so we'll save that right okay so now I have two views with two buttons and what I'd like to do is I'd like to navigate from this view to the next view when you tap on the button so this is pretty easy to do I'm going to hold the control key and click and drag from the next button into the next view, like this. Okay? And you should see a blue line come from the button to, the, to follow the mouse. And then the next view, the whole view should kind of have this blue kind of overlay on it, right? With a little bit of an outline. And then it says view controller down there, so it tells me that I'm connecting to the view controller. So I'll let go, and then it shows me action segue. It shows me a menu, right? And these give me this gives me the choice of the type of segue that I want to create. So what I want to do is I want to choose the show segue. Okay, and then when I do that, Storyboard connects the two views with a line and a little arrow and this little icon in the middle. This is the segue. So the segue is a little piece of software. It's a class object, right? And, uh, you know, in Storyboard, it's ref represented graphically by the little arrow. And you can see if I click on it, the button becomes highlighted, right? And you can see the arrow is pointing to this view to tell me that, you know, this segue is going to take us to this view. Okay? So that was pretty easy to do. And if you want to go back from this view to the previous view, we can do the same thing. So I'll hold the Control key and drag from the previous button to the previous view, right, to the first view. And then I'll let go, and I'll choose a show segue. Okay, and then there I have another action segue. And this one's a little harder to see because it, it gets covered by the first one, but you can see the arrow goes from here back to the, uh, to the first view, right? Okay. So that's pretty good. So let's save that and test again. So I'll click the play button up here. 
and this will build and compile my project into the simulator and you see it here and now we tap on the button and it takes us to the next view and if I tap on the previous button you notice my previous buttons in the wrong spot because I forgot to do the constraints but we'll add those in a moment so there's a couple things to note here when I tap on the button the next view always slides up from the bottom okay and there's a reason for that um, you know that means that the this current view is covering the last view and what's happening is the computer doesn't know how we want to treat these views it just knows that you want to show the next view it doesn't understand a relationship between them right and um, and that's fine and that might work well in some projects and for some you know transitions that's okay um, in most cases though you want to establish a relationship between your views and make the software aware of that relationship so you can use it um, you know for example when you're browsing the web you like to go from one web page to the next but then you like that the history is there so you can click the back button to go to the previous page that you were on and we can set that up here too in um, in uh, Xcode with Storyboard and some of the other classes. I'll do that in the next video though. But this one kind of gets you started on how you're going to set things up. You know, before we leave, why don't we add a couple constraints to this previous button? So I'll, I'll select it and uh, click on the uh, left and bottom and then give it the width and height. And then that should pin this to the bottom, right? Okay, so we'll stop there and then I'll, I'll continue the navigation controller in the next video.